over time, we've just established our habits of the things that we do. <laughs> oh, the coffee? Yeah. Like I sat in the car and I think you were ready just to film this morning's episode uh, exclusive on Sportscaster, uh, 8 a.m. Saturday mornings. Um, sports, sportscaster.com forward slash hashtag sports. Um, backslash? Forward slash. Is it, is this is it a positive or negative slope? That'll determine which slash it is. Is it a positive slope? Is it going up to the right or down to the right? It's going up to the right. Then it's a you're right. Continue. I'm gonna get a forward punch soon, aren't I? <laughs> it's amazing that I anyway. I've been in very few fi- I've been in fights in my life. Yeah. I've been in few of I'm not gonna say I've been a brawler. But I can always tell when somebody wants to punch me in the face. (laughs) After you hit that subscribe bell, be sure to head over to Sportscaster and join us every Saturday at 8 a.m. You can give that one a shot again. Uh, I have actually a topic. Okay. Okay. So... It's always convenient when he does yeah. that. I want to talk about Sean McDermott's challenges and what the Thursday Night Patriots game means to Sean McDermott challenges. Because we all know McDermott doesn't have the best history in the world with challenging, uh, with challenging plays. We're all frustrated as a fan base with it. So what does the Thursday Night game against the, the Patriots and the Giants have to do with Sean McDermott challenges? Nothing. Nothing. It has nothing to Let do with it? Let me explain why it means nothing. One... They, they, they said something like, and, and we talked about it with Mike, the game was out of hand. Why would, why would you even call it anyway? Which is a stupid That's excuse. a stupid argument. It's a stupid argument. I understand that. But you could see the fact that when they reviewed it again, they still didn't call it, it and it no. was blatantly obvious. That's one. Yep. Two, I don't think the Bills are going to be in any blowouts, so the game okay. will still be in hand, so that's moot. Three, I think they'll look at that, and they'll get a memo from the NFL PA – or the NFL that says, we have reviewed this. This is what we're going to do. We're going to move forward. Uh, we're going to try to cl- be more crisp in our assessments with, with on-the-field plays. So you can – I don't think it's going to change because – here's the thing I'm worried about with McDermott. I don't think he had his finger on the pulse of the Patriots game, which worries me. Okay. So I think he'll still he'll still challenge plays the way he does mm-hmm. in, a, in a freewheeling – Style, you know what I mean? I don't know if he has a guy up in the booth that reviews it for him. I, I would love if... to. I would love to know that. But asking, unfortunately, from a media person's perspective, asking that question is kind of an insult, right? You're kind of insulting McDermott by saying, "Hey, Sean, just curious. When you challenge plays, who who comes to you? Do you have somebody that comes to you saying that this is a play that should be challenged or not?" I, I, that's a that's a question that would actually kind of that would that in a, no, no, in I, a media room that would I know I'm that, cu- that wouldn't go well. I was just curious about it because I I firmly believe that, um, like the the the, the challenge that he had because some of his challenges are very calculated, not many, some of them like when he challenged well, yeah sometimes you're looking he challenged at it. a pick play yeah all right now what happened was it was a very close game they mm-hmm. just ran that pick play you thought it might have happened, and they got down inside the goal line. New England is known for running up to the line and getting a new play and, yeah, and getting got, in there. Yeah. So he threw the challenge flag because he was going to take a timeout there. Right. So it didn't matter. Right. If if he won the challenge or not, he's like, I want I want to take a timeout to give my defense a rest and right. plan what the what the Patriots will run inside the goal line anyway. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do, and I don't mind that. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm like he was he was going to take a timeout there anyway. Might as well throw a challenge. Hey, a reasonable. That one's. This reasonable. will be longer than a timeout. Right. Because they'll have to review this. Right. Sure. So, so that one, to me, was calculated. He, I don't think he had the intention of winning that one. I think he was going to call a timeout anyway. And by throwing well, the flag, honestly, that was one of his better challenges. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, I like to focus on some of the challenges that are better, but uh, the Bills haven't had too many close calls mm-hmm. as far as challenges go. So. Well, it, it, here's here's the reason why I think that this does impact Sean McDermott, right? Okay. And I'm gonna, we're going to funnel that down because you brought mm-hmm. up exactly the example that I wanted you to. Okay. Right? So we're bringing up the the pass interference. Yes. Right? Calling pass interference, challenging pass interference. That's a big deal, though. That is a huge deal. It's a big dialogue. So the NFL has a has a handle on Twitter, at NFL Officiating. So Al Riveron will go and explain the calls that he reviews and why he made the rulings that he did. 
And one of the things that we that was really cool with, and I'm going to bring up a dead dinosaur here, the AAF, right? <laughs> the, one of the cool things was when something was challenged, they gave you the dialogue and a camera inside the booth where it was being reviewed. And Ooh. you could hear the dialogue between the reviewer and the official explaining the ruling, explaining what they see, and walking them through Holding the replay. Holding people accountable. Right. It was super cool, right? Yeah. So the NFL has a big, thick wall in that process right now. Yes. They do not want you to see what happens with Al River on reviewing all these plays that are challenged yeah. and what is actually happening on the field, right? They, they have a big wall there. But the AAF broke that wall right down. It was great because you got the ruling right away. You mm-hmm. heard exactly from the official what the ruling was going to be before it was announced to the crowd. Mm-hmm. So it gave the announcers time to actually break down what they were talking about instead of trying to piecemeal it together afterwards, yeah. right? They got real information. It was really cool. But here's the problem. McDermott has challenged non-called pass interference a few times. If the Thursday night Patriots game against the Giants doesn't tell you that it will never be called, if you review a this should have been in, this this should have been pass interference, if that doesn't tell you that they will never overturn that call, I don't know what does. That's a great point. Because they're never going to overturn pass interference. I didn't know initially where you were going with that yeah. because that is one of the first ones that was reviewed. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there I don't I don't recall another one being reviewed in a game, but then again, that's a Thursday night game. It's everyone. The spotlight's on it, so right. you see all that. Well, yeah, I mean, McDermott um, called. A, you had a review to pass interference, yeah. right? The fact that you can review it, one, I think, is amazing. But it, two, it, the fact that it's not getting overturned. You, I, I don't think you're just being specific to McDermott here, though. I think you're being specific to the league. I think the well, league saw that and said, "That is blatant." Why would we throw a flag right. on that? I think it's I think it's league wide. I don't think that's just specific to McDermott. I'm just though. saying this specifically to McDermott, his history and challenges is so poor yes. that if this doesn't tell you you need to keep your challenge flag in your pocket, don't even bother. I don't know what does. I think you you need to stop calling timeouts when you don't when the team's about to punt. Well, I mean, we could talk about we can complain about game the management. Timeouts stuff. Is, yeah, yeah. But the, but but throwing flags is a part of the game management. You got to realize that that's I, huge. Yeah, I agree. But that I, one, like the one example I gave earlier, was the one that I was like, okay, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. Challenge it. If you don't get it, you're still calling timeout anyway. It doesn't right. matter. Um, so in that respect, I like it. But the other ones that he calls, and there's not many. There's not mm-hmm. many. You got to remember when you have. I'm trying to think if there's a correlation between if you have a well coached, disciplined team, you're not going to have too many challenge flags going on. He better clean up a lot of the things that he's doing. Yeah, look at, look at me sound like I'm. I put a tie. On, <laughs> I put a tie on. I got to tell people what to do. I, no, I'm just saying from from a view from a fan standpoint, the things that he does in the games that he has, he's gonna have a lot of tight games. Mm-hmm. You have to manage that clock, manage the the flag in your pocket, like you said, mm-hmm. so much more in those tight games. Because if you have, if you're blowing everybody out, you don't care. It doesn't matter what you right. do. So I don't think he's gonna have that many blowouts. So. Hopefully the experience that he gets being in those a lot of those close games because I think there was a stat out that said the games that aren't close with McDermott when he gets blown out mm-hmm. he has too many of them mm-hmm. in his first in his first uh, few years he's had a lot of games where he's gotten blown out yeah so you don't the more close games he has I think he's gonna get more acclimated to time management and all that stuff I just wonder it's not a league rule that the head coach has to throw the challenge flag. That's no, but he just has it. Right. So he's, he's, he has a final say. You're not going to say, hey, the defensive coordinator has the challenge flag. Right. I mean, what are you going to say? Well, I'm just saying that m- maybe it would be a good idea to, you know, give the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, and McDermott a key where you have to, like, unlock it, like the nuke lock codes like you see in all the movies where you got to put the key in and turn it at the same time, pop the glass container no. open to get to the button. That's funny. I would I would put I would put one third of the flag in all their pockets, and they have Velcro. <laughs> and they're attached by Velcro, and you can only put them only only Dables and Frazier's only hook up to McDermott. See, so he has the final say. If I were the head coach, I would be playing a game. Like I would write stuff on the flag because. Are you kidding me? Why not? You're just no, no, that's what I write. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you suck, Riveron. <laughs> Review that. <laughs> you throw. You have a, you have a gif uh, gif war with him. You just have that uh, always sunny with Danny DeVito. <laughs> you throw it out. The guy opens it up. And just, oh. <laughs> oh. You might want to review that one.